Is anybody here? The room's quiet. We're back again. No one's here this time, unfortunately. It's just me and the knife right there. All right, so I asked my teacher to uh, make the classes a little bit more technique rich. And the reason I didn't upload last week is because uh, there wasn't much more. We were repeating what we had last week, which was basically the whole, you know, going for a neck and then you, the, the arm, the guy blocks it and you remove his arm and go again. And then you go with the other arm and pull again. Now these movements are of course, very hard to demonstrate alone, but I'll do my best anyway, because we do what we can, really. you know what we can. All right, so how it works, what do we do today? So basically we went for the neck on this side, on the inside here, and buddy tries to uh, block it. So he blocks it, you move it around, and then you go for the back of his neck right there, right? So you go like there, then you grab his shoulder. So you walk, you step around him, you grab his other shoulder, all right? So after you got the neck, go around him, step around his shoulder. Then you step right beside. Now, notice I'm not going at the spine, but two inches to the side, one inch to the side from all the muscles. And you step in there, put your hand on top, go down. Now why you need two hands is because there's gonna be bones, a lot of stuff going in the way to cut through. So as you're coming down, you have to push all the way down. So then you can push him away. Now while, while the guy's over there, where he's standing, so imagine I'm standing behind him. I stab right here, all the way down. You can also control his shoulder right here. And then you go to the kidney. Um, and then you can cut underneath between the legs and then you put your elbow here and you push it. So you cut his balls and you push him. You can also stab him in the asshole while you're at it. So you spread the damage. So let's go let's do that again. So you go for a neck, he blocks it. You block, you move his arm, you go for it again. Go for it back. Go for it, but behind it, so he's facing that way now. So you go to the back, uh, behind the right beside the spine, double hand support, bring it down, hold the shoulder, left shoulder, go for the kidney, cut the balls, you can even go, stab the asshole. All right, very asshole shit. Now, we practice this a bunch of times, but just to reiterate, you go for the neck, move the arm around, you go to the back to the neck again, then you stand behind him, right behind him, so imagine he's right standing right in front of me. Stand right to the back, pull it down to the kidney. You can also grab the shoulder, right underneath the arm, right underneath the legs, cut the balls, or you can also stab the ass, push away. Um, what else did we do? Now, he was, he was kind of like playing me a little bit and threw a little too much in the class. So like, he said, you're gonna forget it all. I'm like, okay, whatever, fuck. Now, I didn't ask him for like 300 techniques. See, that's how it is with the, all these instructors. They're trying to fuck with you all the time. Like. They, they say you go to the seminar, teach you like 500 techniques. They know you're only gonna remember like three or four or 10 even. And then they charge you for 500. And then you come back home, you're like, holy shit, what the fuck did I learn, right? Um, and if you're smart, you take notes. But even if you take notes and make videos like this, you still gonna have a hard time remembering. You still have to pack this back flex. Still, it's good to learn and all this shit. I guess he was just trying to show me the depth of Libra fighting and how um, there's so many different stuff. Regardless, I'm just sharing what I know for myself, ref later reference as well. All right, so another one was, so yeah, another one was like, let's say you're trying to go for the neck, right, uh, right here, try to go for the neck, and then the guy tries to stop it with his other hand, instead of like this hand, he's stopping it with his other hand. So you grab the hand, Pull him in, all right, so he's facing you guys now. Go along the arm to the neck, step to the neck, all right. Slap his face, you look over, slap his face, pull him back, cut the neck, or, that's where good things got interesting, right here, behind the clavicle, is a very sensitive area. Now you can even just point at it and grab it with your hands, if you saw Rambo 5 kind of exaggerates so he can go and grabs the whole clavicle bone, rips it out of the guy's fucking side of the guy's neck. 
you're not Rambo, you just dab, jab your finger in there, grab some. If you got a knife, you can also stab in there. And what you got in there is a fucking control. And I asked if this is fatal, and it's hard to be fatal, but if you hit the subclavian artery, it is fatal, so be careful. Um, so yeah, once you got guy's face, you grab his nose, you grab underneath, and if he bites your fucking hand, a guy, you pull, you pull his cheek, it's very painful. And then that way, you have control of his face. So then you cut the throat, or you control right here. Meanwhile, so you control right there. This is for multiple attackers. This is also what we practice a lot, is that much, much of the attackers come at you, you pull the face, you control the whole fucking uh, clavicle. And then, after this, you can all go for the kidney again. Same, you can cut again, or you can push. Like that, stand behind him with your elbow and knife, push. Push him away. So that was pretty good. So basically again, you block, so you go for the neck, so you go for this side. You pull him in, go for it, stab right here in the neck, stab the neck, and then you go grab the face, around the neck, or in the calico, control, control, push with the elbow. All right, um, what else was there? Then we did some pendulum shit, and pendulum basically, from the gist of it, he was trying to say is that like, so, there's a bunch of stuff that can like, move your knife around in a way that you can like maneuver the other points attack. So let's say like you're going for the neck with this angle, at this angle, not this angle, because normally it's this. Most of the attacks are from this side. So let's say my right dominant hand, they're all gonna come from this side, stabbing, slashing, punching. But that's why the Libra always tries to go from that side so it's less common, less anticipated. So anyway, in the, in the pendulum movement, you go for the neck, right there, the guy tries to stop it with his hand, with his uh, form, like that. So you go over there. So how you do it is you kind of like, from this angle, probably more close to that. With the sharp side of the blade, you grab this and then you open, but still holding on to the arm. So as the guy tried to block, you will stretch him out. Meanwhile, you're hitting his face, pushing, punching. So you stab. So you're trying to go for the neck. Try to go for the neck. You grab the arm, stretch. Obviously, I'm going slow for demonstration. To the ribs. So you got the, the angle, let's say go to the ribs. To the neck. To the ribs. To the neck. The ribs. All right. So, as he blocks, stretch him out to the ribs. Again, to the neck. What else do we have? We had uh, we had this, this, this. Um, you can also do it in reverse, like same thing, and then go to the face or to the body. Um, so then there was like one, just one of these, or both of them, or whatever. That's that. <sighs> what else did we learn? See, fuck, they did it on purpose to teach too much, and I can't remember all of it. Um, but I think that was the gist of it. Basically the gist of it. So the hardest one, I think, was the one that we go behind the guy's neck. So you try to go from front, and you go here, go, um, go from front. He blocks it, right, and he grabs his arm. Same time you pull, you push, go to the neck, right? Then you, boom, slap his face or grab his face, like very impactful. Then you go around him, cut the neck, and then or you put it in the clavicle, control there, you know? The, that's why the Libra Muerta has these uh, fucking, the puppeteer in the logo, because you're trying to control the person who's trying to dominate you. It's a lot of psychology in this. And I read, I read an interview that um, Scott Bob is uh, Bob Scott, the founder of the system. He's actually quite a pacifist now. He's a nice guy, doesn't even carry a knife. Cool. Um, I really respect that. However, uh, for a lot of people that are intimidated in uh, dangerous areas, uh, this kind of stuff can give them an edge, <laughs> literally an edge, so that they can um, psychologically advance 
in their areas and, and not be dominated by certain groups or forces that may attack them. Um, so they won't be um, intimidated to, let's say, you know, walk at night or whatever it is. Um, anyway, so go for the neck and then slap the face, go around, cut or control the clavicle or to the back of the spine, this and then from behind, pull. Now, these are all different pieces that have to flow together. Just like boxing, you got left hook or you got an uppercut, you have to be able to uh, make it in certain combinations that make sense, not only in a scenario, but also for you and your body type and the opponent and the type of opponent that he is. For example, like, it doesn't make a lot of sense to grab someone from that's much taller than you and go something like that. But it does make sense to like hit his fucking face, pull him down, go around, and then put the knife around the bicep and then control him like that. That's powerful because it essentially gives you a chance to control. So that's that's key. Um, you you want to adapt according to the position opponent, their their training level, their size, their strength, their um, speed, their, you know, all tact, or whatever the situation may be, if they're on drugs, if they're not. Because if a person is, let's say, they're trained, <laughs> you wouldn't get the fuck out of there. There's no way you're gonna fucking com compete with that. Like, there's, just don't. The best thing you do, book it. But if there's, if it's a scenario where there's no exit or there's no choice, you must fight your way out, then, you know, you gotta be much more tactful, much more careful, and selective with the movements that you choose. Um, if they're bigger than you, um, don't try to do like, you know, movements that will work on someone that's equal size or smaller. Try to adapt, like just like I said, like instead of grabbing, going for the, the neck, go for the arm. Like, like something a little closer. If he's fucking like two feet over you, uh, taller than you. Um, likewise, I think the key to this is practice, practice, practice until you get to a point where you can adapt these techniques to any circumstances and you don't no longer have to uh, carry a sequence in your head and that these sequences the whole point of them is to see the fluid motion and the logic behind it it's kind of like okay like you're trying to see how a situation will be adapted like if if let's say he blocks this way he blocks the arm this way you can block that go back in if he blocks with this hand you can grab that hand, go back in. Or if you block this hand, you can grab using the knife, go back in. Also, another point is that make sure when you do use the knife, you do use the knife. So it's not like just your forearm blocking. You want to block, cut with the arm and control with the forearm, with, with the knife. See, the knife. That's why I think they emphasize having the certain hook shape of the knife is so that it can grab grab and pull, grab and pull, so pull, pull more control and manipulation, which is useful when you have multiple attractors and you want to use that person as kind of like a shield versus the other attacker or throw them into them and then you can, again, book it. Um, the whole point is that you want to line up attackers. So if, you wanna, if you're getting attacked by multiple angles, it's better if they're all lined up, you see? Because they can't all simultaneously attack. But if they are surrounding you, they can all simultaneously the attack and you're fucked. So you want to position them, grab one guy, you hold it between in front of the other two and then pull it so they kind of like line up. Then you have a better chance of dealing with them, you know, in a kind of sequence manner as opposed to uh, dealing with multiple attackers simultaneously, which is damn near impossible. You barely got attention number one and then you got another guy from behind you. Um, this is also very key situational awareness. So if I'm, as they working over here, buddy's over there, you gotta pay attention to that or you're gonna get caught. And that's the key, I think, with the system that they were trying to emphasize. Also, like, as soon as, like, let's say, I went for a neck and then I went to the back of the side. As soon as I see this guy is coming from this side, I either grab here, I pull him back, I grab the shoulder, grab the entire shoulder muscle, pull him back and then I got him under control. Uh, or at least in front of me as a shield. Um, what else did I do? I, was, I wanted to know if I could kind of sand the edges down because they were kind of sharp and they were cutting the 
uh, training partners and stuff. So we got them to stand it down. What else do we do? That's it pretty much. Oh yeah. The, the, the most majority of the grip is on the sharps are facing in the side grip. So when you run under the fucking between the legs, they're facing you. And you push away from the elbow. Uh, oh yeah, I also try to play with the with the larger knife here. With the larger knife, see, it is it will be it's much harder to adapt these techniques to a much with this larger ass knife because you can end up cutting yourself. So let's say you let's try for example, you go for the neck, right, and then you. You can cut yourself here, you grab a fist, you cut, all right? Or even from the bottom. It would be hard to maneuver it in there. If there's many points it could like unarm yourself, like it's easier, because it's larger. So the movements have to be adapted for a larger blade. And I think the training system is different. But for now, I'm focusing on this one. because you can see the size difference, it is pretty large. And, uh, you don't have a lot of work like it's it's a different system so we'll talk about that later all right until next week adios